Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and today we are actually starting a new series that is system design series and if you are new to the channel do subscribe because lot more interesting videos are coming up. So yeah, let's get started. So we are starting system design series and it's an episode one. So the first topic is SQL versus NoSQL. If you are appearing for a system design interview, it is likely chances that you will ask question while you are creating a DB schema or maybe you are just trying to talk over what DB are you using. And even on fresher hiring managers generally ask this. So it's it should cover both the experience and fresher candidates. Talking about all these companies, I have given interviews in Databricks, Postman, Uber, Rippling, Google, in all these companies, I have given the system design round and each of the company has asked me this question, SQL versus NoSQL. So it is very important question that is generally asked in interview. So I would say just focus and just try to watch this video till the end so that you will be able to understand how to answer this question and get it right. So first of all, we know that this is very a classic interview trap. Generally interviewer asks like, hey, can you tell me a uh, difference between NoSQL or SQL and why are you using SQL or a NoSQL? That is generally the question. But if you are still stuck that you should answer this question only on the basis of scale versus consistency, then you are likely wrong because a modern landscape of the databases has evolved a lot and we will go through it. Yeah, so just a brief, I was going through why this question even started to get asked. Uh, while in early 2010s, when all the companies were actually scaling, they outgrew a single node of SQL instances, companies like Facebook, Amazon, right? And they hit scaling limits. And that's where actually the NoSQL enters. And some about it actually got boom for like design for a, if you are designing for a horizontal scaling, then actually get boom even if you have the 100 users people started using NoSQL because it was that easy but somehow it has like let many limitations such as it sacrificed joins consistency schemas for scale but yeah eventually it became so much popular that it got used in maybe a small application large application medium application everywhere but yeah if you talk about today's scenario it's not 2015 it's 2025 and if you're still thinking that you should answer if it is scale, then NoSQL is the go-to solution. And, e and if it's a consistency or it's a legacy, then SQL. No, the industry has overcorrected over the time and it has built a complex infra for the problems you have faced. Meanwhile, SQL didn't stop evolving. That is the main key point here. If we talk about the modern DB landscape in 2025, the NoSQL is now had the broader family of specialized tools. If I talk about the document, we have MongoDB, DynamoDB, which consists of mostly focusing on the flexible schema. If you talk about the white column, we have Cassandra, HBase, which mostly uh, cater the massive write throughput. If you talk about the graph, we have Neo4j, which generally focuses on the heavy data part, relationship heavy data part. If you talk about the time series, we have InfluxDB, which is majorly focusing on the metrics and event. VectorDB, PineCon and WaveyArt for AI and ML encodings. And if you talk about the key value, surely a Redis slash meme cached is a solution for caching and the simpler lookups. So if you see each of these databases solve a specific needs, right? So it gets very difficult to answer an interview which DB to use and why to use because there can be many multiple instances in a designing system which can require a combination of these two. So how to answer it? If you talk about the SQL scenario right now, and modern SQL is not what it was used to be in the earlier days. Now Postgres surely has a lot more capabilities similar to the NoSQL. Just like JSON-B, it's similar to Mongo, it supports its rival document stores. If you talk about searching part, full text search is provided similar to Elasticsearch. If you talk about time series support, it's there similar to Influx. And it even supports the vector search. So you can see like a one powerful SQL DB can now cover many use cases. So can we tell like are the SQL back to the track instead of using the NoSQL, we can rely on SQL. Yeah, in most of the cases, I would say a single Postgres instance with a caching and indexing should work in 90% of the cases, 95% of the cases, but it surely depends on what type of system you are building in a system design interview. Yeah, as I talked like SQL will surely mostly win 95% of the cases. And some of the reasons are these because SQL has a mature ecosystem developer tools, developer functionalities, familiarity is there. Everyone know like what is SQL, how to handle the query, how to handle the transaction. So if anything breaks in on-call rotation also, it's very easy for any developer to figure it out. 
it follows the asset transaction very flexible and querying it's easy to scale vertically on modern cloud infra also so just if i would say the postgres on a good aws box can handle a millions of requests per day but yeah it surely depends on the way you are structuring and layout your data it still has a massive impact on the performance side i would say so the reality is that different access pattern uh, continue to demand different approaches to data storage and retrieval like a write heavy time series workload has fundamentally different needs than an oltp like online transaction processing system because it handles a complex query complex transactions so jumping on how to give answer in interview that is the most important question and we are waiting for it first of all whenever you get this question um, can you tell the difference between sql and no sql or why are you using this never never answer well it depends we already know like it surely depends on some of the criteria so never tell like hey well it depends you should be understanding the trade off behind why it depends right you should answer that instead of this but before answering this question you should have all the solution for the requirements first is like you should know the read and write ratio and the patterns similar in that if you don't know ask the interviewer what was the read and write ratio maybe actual numbers can help you maybe ratio can help you it's up to you does your db includes the query complexity like joins are included or not right that is one of the part does we need to uh, see the consistency requirement or not that is one of the criteria other is expected data volume you can see the rough figures if we need the scaling part or not and yeah surely there will be a time in interview that you can see the conversation between you and interviewer is not going in the same pace suppose you are supporting for the sql but interview wants that it should be no sql it should be no brainer for you because you want to clear an interview so you should align with the interviewer after some point of time i know it's a bit of a situation that should not happen but there are some old folks there are some old companies who still rely on this solution which they want so you should be actually focusing on clearing the interview rather than starting on a debate at that point of time that is very important but i would say many of the candidate actually break the conversation here with the interviewer and it actually impact their feedback at the end and they re- get rejected so yeah watch out whatever interviewer is sign- signaling to you okay so if we talk about the scale as i told after the requirements you gather and you see that it's a huge scale that we need to handle so here is the criteria suppose scale is not in concern then surely a sql with a well tuned postgres with caching and uh, indexing should work right because it can handle a flexible querying with a team normalization and everything as a transaction that can actually work a mature ecosystem is already there engineers are well known aware of that okay. these are the few of the criteria right if scaling is seriously a concern then you can maybe think about a no sql databases like mostly writes with simple reads can be handled through cassandra or dynamo db if you are talking about full text search across millions of documents then surely elastic search might make sense here right if you are talking about like simple searching or maybe a lookup Uh, then a key value lookup should be possible through redis or meme cache yeah so this is my general pattern which i go through in an interview i take like if it's a seek if it's a scale is a concern then if the scale is not a concern then postgres with caching surely you can help yeah surely the extension with postgres and uh, time scale db together with agent indexes can cover many of the edge cases many of the use cases as well so still i am relying on the sql part but if you think like scale is majority of the concern here then you should see whether you need to handle um write heavy db is required then you should go with dynamo db or cassandra if it's like read heavy then you can focus if it's needing for the full text search or the lookup then you can go with elastic search or maybe a post uh, sorry for the redis and yeah, surely you should have all these requirements expected volume read and write ratio querying complexity and consistency in transaction after that only you can design you can decide all the scenario but this is your go to chart i would say for a interview you should focus on this pattern first and yeah many of the things you will see that in an system there is a false assumption that we should only rely on one type of database in a system that is quite wrong and that is i think the false division that is created because in modern application we used to rely on both sql and no sql databases generally postgres are used for their core business data handling part mainly for the transaction if you talk about searching or maybe caching part redis is used for searching we use elastic search for storage of any image or video we used to go for s3 
and maybe for a specific high volume write patterns we used to rely on DynamoDB. So there are multiple scenarios in which both the pa both the DBs can be used. One of the example is Book My Show design system in which the transaction can be handled through Postgres, searching can be handled through Redis plus Elasticsearch by having the CDC between the Postgres and Elasticsearch. And if I would say some of the storage part can be handled through S3 itself, like if you are showing some trailer or images and like details about the tickets. Yeah, so 90 to 95 percent of the applications problems can be solved through SQL with caching or maybe indexing or maybe partitioning, but it can be solved through SQL. That's what's the main point. So whenever you're answering, try to figure out like why are we not using SQL here? That should be a main first question. If you see the interviewer is getting driving towards the NoSQL part, then you should shortly focus on the NoSQL also. But start focusing on the SQL, then shift to NoSQL. At the end, the closure I want to say, whenever you get a question, SQL versus NoSQL, right now it's not about the tech anymore. It's more focused on why are you using that X database, like the DynamoDB or maybe Elasticsearch. It is that question. It's not about differentiation on comparison. So you should focus more on the trade-offs about the databases rather than answering the comparison part. And if you want to answer this question with very specific scenario, you need to understand how things go, then you should have understanding about the modern databases capabilities and limitations that I told, how to match technology choices with actual requirements. What is the operational cost is required? Sometimes if you see, if you are trying to use a multiple DB in an application, the complexity and the cost of maintenance increases a lot. So you have to generalize it as a trade-off whenever you're trying to evaluate the scenario. When to be boring and when to be innovative, you have to think in the system design interview that you should go with SQL, which seems to be boring, but no SQL seems to be very innovative idea. But yeah, at the end, you have to be focusing more on the trade-offs part of the no SQL and SQL. But yeah, surely you can think beyond a NoSQL for a scale or maybe SQL for transactions. You should be thinking more about the trade-offs and all this scenario which I talked about. So that's it for the video. If you like the video, please like it, share, subscribe and comment whatever you like in this video. And let me know in the comments what else video do you want from my side or maybe should I include in system design series that will be helpful for both of us. And yeah, till then, see you in another interview experience and tech more videos. Scott here, signing off.